What's up guys? Justin here with the CGessentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about the global and local axes and how they can affect the direction that objects move and other things like that inside of Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so if you remember a few weeks ago, we animated this crane from Sketchfab by parenting a bunch of individual objects to an empty, right? So that empty is right here and you can use that empty in order to make the crane rotate. And so we can use this in order to quickly create like an animation, something like that, of multiple objects moving just by changing one object's location. However, this gets a little bit problematic when you're dealing with something like this, uh, the crane hook right here. So the crane hook, right, is supposed to move out and in. So if I tap the G key and the Y key and I move this this way, this is moving just fine because the crane is aligned. So if we look at it from the top down, right, this crane is aligned with the overall world axes, which are right here. That works great right up until you rotate your crane, right? When you rotate your crane, now if I wanna make this move out or in like this, it's not gonna work the same way because now if I tap G and Y, notice how this is still moving along the global axes, right? That's the axes that govern the directions in your overall model. However, there's a way to make this move in the direction that we want, and that's by using the object's local axes. And so what the local axes are, and we're gonna go into our options and turn on our object origin so you can see this. Notice how this option or this object has its own set of axes or its own origin. And so basically that dictates some different things about your object, right? You've got your origin location, but then you've also got the axes directions for your objects themselves. And so in this case, this object's Y direction is still this way, even though it's been rotated along the global axes, right? So no matter where I rotate that, notice how this is facing this direction um, because it's just being moved around from a global standpoint, but the individual axis directions aren't being changed. And so where that can be really helpful for us is let's say we wanted this hook to move out and in. Right? Well, the way that we can do that is instead of transforming the object on the global axis, what we're going to do instead, and I'm going to toggle this back off, what we can do instead is set our transform orientation to a local orientation instead. And so what that's going to do is as soon as I select that, and then I tap this object, and I tap the G key, and I move it, notice how it's moving this object along the local axis rather than the global axis, right? So it's using the local transform direction that's set by that object origin. And so what that means is that means that we can actually keyframe this, All right? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set a keyframe right here. So I'm just gonna tap I and I'm gonna keyframe the location, rotation, and scale. And then when my crane's over here, I'm gonna tap the G key, tap the Y key, and notice how that's moving on those local axes because I have this selected. And then I'm gonna insert another keyframe right here. Now, notice how we can set our overall crane location using the global transform and then the movement of this object using that local transform. So now if I click on play, notice how that crane or um, that hook is moving outward. And I want this to take a little bit longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this out here. So this is a little slower, but notice how now that crane piece is moving the way that we want it to move inside of Blender. All right, so leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about global versus local transforms. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.